Hello and welcome to the next part of Framstick's tutorial. We talked about the graphical user interface. Last time we talked about the F1 genetic encoding and how we encode body. So we learned how to build shapes like this and shapes like this and maybe even more complex shapes. And now it's time for neural networks. In Framstick's we are able to build neural networks of any topology. So any connections of neurons are possible, even some strange situations we will see in a moment. So, how it works? Neurons. Neural net description is mixed with the body genotype, so it's not like a separate part of the genotype. It's encoded within the same genotype and even interleaving with body in some cases, like for example here. And the rule is very simple. Every neuron is some section in this square brackets. Okay? So in this genotype I'm showing you here, we have one, two neurons. Okay? Two neurons. And some of them have more inputs, some of them have less inputs. We will see in a moment. Each entity enclosed in square brackets is a single neuron, commas delimit inputs, connections, of the neuron, okay, so we have one comma here. This means that this neuron probably has two inputs and this has only a single input. In each connection, the number before colon is the relative neuron reference. Zero means self connection, plus one means next neuron in the genotype, minus one means previous neuron before colon, meaning this number. So 1 means input from the next neuron, minus 1 means input from the output of the previous neuron, and 0 means taking input from oneself, from the output of this very neuron. So it's a purely recurrent, the smallest recurrent connection. The other number after the colon is the connection weight. So 2, 3, and one are connection weights. In the example above, no neuron type name has been specified, thus the default N neuron is assumed. This is the most basic neuron, the sigmoid neuron. We will speak about classes and kinds of neurons in a moment. See the following examples and ensure you understand them well. Enter them as genotypes into the program. So let's start with this very genotype and see what it actually does. We have x, x and x. So this is this body part and we understand it very well because we completed the previous part of the tutorial. And this is how the neural network looks like. We have neuron number 0 and neuron number 1. This is neuron number 0. Remember that you can use this mapping between genes and fins. So we could either select something here or we could select something here and you see this underline under some characters of the genotype. It shows you which part of the genotype describes this part of the phenotype. So this neuron number zero has a connection from the output of the following neuron and it's indeed correct because this is this connection and this neuron has two connections one from the output of the previous neuron, so this is this connection. It even says connected to number zero and neuron weight equal 3.0. You need to place your mouse cursor just near the input of this neuron and then you will get this tooltip about connection weight. For example, connection weight 2.0 this is this connection, I can change it to 2.5 and now it should say weight 2.5 and this connection is 1.0 because this is this very gene that encodes this, okay? I could even add something like this, another parallel self connection, that's why I told you that we may have very strange situations here. I could probably even add for you to see something like this. And now we have a separate neuron with a self-connection. Okay, 
So we have two sub-neural networks in this creature. Now let's see those examples. C, 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 X, 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 X. We probably remember what the C gene did. And we have one, two, three, four, five neurons. And each neuron is connected to the previous one with weight one. Okay, so indeed it's a chain of neurons. You may pause the video here if you want to play with this genotype yourself to understand better why it's a chain of neurons. Different neuron placement in the body. Okay, so we have actually the same or almost the same genotype. Look, all the neurons are exactly the same. So the neural network must be the same, but at the same time there is some hidden property of this encoding. Some neurons may have some preference as to where they should or they would want to be located in body. For example, within those sticks, in the middle of those sticks, at ends, which are called parts, those points are called parts. So this is the first part, the second, the third, and the fourth part. And these segments are called joints. Even though in some simulations the situation is exactly opposite. And we would call these parts and those points in the middle we would call joints. But for now let's use this convention that those middle points are parts and those longer segments are joints. Okay? So those neurons may have some preference. I want to be located on a part. I want to be located on a joint. And some neurons may say whatever. I don't have any preference. I may be located on part or on joint or I may even be not connected to body at all. I'm just a signal processing neuron and I don't need any special placement. If you locate me somewhere in the body, okay, whatever. I don't need it. I don't use this information or, or this fact of being located in a body in any way. So this is exactly the case here. Those neurons, those signal processing neurons, I told you these are the default sigmoid neurons, they say whatever. They can be attached to the body. It doesn't influence how they work. So there is some difference here. But when you look at this genotype and at this genotype, both body and brain will look the same. Well, okay, maybe you will see some difference. Let's see. This is the first genotype, body and brain. And let's see what will happen when we paste the other one. And here it is. Do you see the difference? There is some difference, but you need to have good eyes and look very carefully. Even though it doesn't look like there is some difference, but there actually is some difference. So maybe pause and discover it yourself. And this comment about different neuron placement in the body reveals the difference. You just need to see this in the program. Close the loop. Okay. So this probably is a loop closed in this neural network. Mm -hmm. This works as expected. And the thing that you needed to discover in the previous question of mine is exactly much more apparent here in this picture. And finally, multiple inputs. You can try this. I showed you some example with multiple inputs earlier. There are many different neuron types. C. Simulation parameters, genetics, neurons to add for a quick summary. Okay. We press this button which opens all the parameters. You remember this huge window, like a control panel of every parameter in Framsticks. And now let's see genetics, neurons to add. And indeed, we have some list of available neurons. Some of them are activated, some of them are not. All those neurons which are activated will be used by genetic operations, like for example, mutation. If a mutation wants to add a neuron, it will randomly choose one of those neurons which are activated. 
here in this configuration. And if you want to know more details about any of those neurons, just hover the mouse over the name, for example, and you have a tooltip which says some longer description, characteristics, does not use inputs, provides output value, should be located on a path. You see? This is an example of this preference where this neuron wants to be located. Oh, and by the way, this N neuron does not require location in BUD. So it just doesn't care where it will be located. But then there is some important information, properties. Inertia for sigmoid state. So every neuron has some parameters, because not every neuron is created equal, even though they are all N neurons, for example. Let's see, for example, at the neuron which is called sin, sinus generator. Output frequency is F0 plus input characteristics. Uses single input, provides output value, does not require location in body. So this is this whatever neuron. Properties, base frequency and time. So in addition to the neuron itself generating this signal characteristics, it will also be controlled by two neurons, which can be defined in the genotype. We will see an example of this in a moment. So every kind of a neuron and every instance of a neuron may have different parameter values. Or otherwise, if we do not specify those values, they are some default values. So then every neuron would be equal if we didn't use any specific parameter values. Okay, and we have an example with this sinus neuron. So this example creates a single segment in body, then a single neuron, a sinus neuron. You see that there is actually an additional part in the definition of the neuron, which we didn't use so far. So nowhere in those earlier examples you saw some name and a comma. We only had inputs and weights. So that's why the tutorial said, in the example above, no neuron type name has been specified, thus the default N neuron is assumed. So if we took this example and changed it by adding N and a comma, exactly nothing would be changed. So these are perfectly equivalent genotypes, with this N letter and without this N letter. There is a note about an older notation but let's not spend time talking about this. This is only if you encounter some old genotypes, then this remark explains how to interpret older syntax. So in this example, F0 is this parameter of the neuron, base frequency. Now we have some more examples. For example, this. Three receptors connected to a single neuron. This is how it looks. By the way, I told you in the previous part of the tutorial that you can press Shift and you can rearrange this neural network the way you prefer it. But it's uh, very volatile, so every time you change anything, the layout will be refreshed to the default one. And the last example is something maybe more useful, because we have some sensor, the touch sensor in this case, then some intermediate neuron and an effector. So something that indeed influences the body, and when you look at this, at this design, we see that this muscle, this effector here, we can actually click it, is placed between those two segments. So it will be bending them like this, or maybe twisting them, depends on the type of the neuron. See interactive demonstrations of basic sensor and effector neurons. So first you have simple animations and you can read how they work, but I think this animation is quite good to explain how it works. So this is an example of an effector or a muscle or an actuator. And those three examples, the G receptor, the T touch and the S smell explain how the smell sensors or receptors work. So G is for orientation, when the orientation of this joint, this segment, this sticks horizontal, we get zero, and otherwise we get plus, minus one, or some intermediate values. So we cannot distinguish between different orientations 
when we are horizontal, this touch sensor gives us minus one when above ground, zero when we touch, and slightly positive values when we touch deeper or stronger into some surface. And this smell receptor is like a non-directional microphone. When we discover the intensity of some field or of some substance at a given point in the space without any direction. So it's just a single value. And then we have some more interactive examples when we can actually influence and see how they behave. Try out different configurations. This is this touch sensor. And finally, the smell sensor, which may be one of the most interesting sensors, because we may have many sources of energy. And there is even a formula documented on this web page. And then more technical and more detailed information follows below. We have two muscles bending and rotating. We have this gyroscope, so-called gyroscope, a touch, smell, water sensor as well for different environments, energy sensor, which will indicate how much energy the creature has. So the creature can react differently depending on how much energy it has or how close to death it is, for example. And some more details here. Finally, again, you can look at this F1 encoding reference here and read about neurons and how they are encoded here. Now that you understand how this encoding works and you are able to build bodies and brains, we are ready to simulate them to see how they work in simulation, and now we will be able to influence the way the neural network works. So see you in the next part of the tutorial.